Welcome everyone to Kellenberg Robotics Coding Video 3. Let's just get right into last month's homework. Uh, question 1. What condition in an if-else statement will be executed if the given condition is false? Else or elif? Number 2. In nested if statements, what must occur for the second statement to be considered? The first statement must be true. Number 3. What is an example of initialization followed by a condition in a for loop? The example I give here is in the for loop, the initialization is integer n equals 0, and then the condition is if that integer is less than 5. Once it hits 5, the for loop will stop. Number 4. What kind of condition is required to make an infinite for loop? One that will never return a false condition. Number 5. What is one major difference between a for loop and a while loop? And here I say in parentheses, you can use the internet if you are stuck. A for loop is normally used when the number of iterations is known. For example, for init condition iteration, and then the statements are followed. This would be an example of, we know that the VEX competition time is 2 minutes long and the 15 seconds for autonomous is given. So you create a for loop, let's say if you want to constantly just be driving in the autonomous period for a certain distance, or whatever measurement you are going by if you want distance, time, such. A while loop is normally used when the number of iterations is unknown. For instance, you don't know how many exact rotations the motor will spin during the two minutes of the competition. So instead of having a for loop for your driving control period, you have a while loop and you set that to be true since you want it to be an infinite loop. Number six, if there is a continue statement used inside of a loop, where does the control directly go? It goes back to the beginning for the next iteration skipping the execution of the statements. Number seven, what does the break statement do in a normal loop, not a switch case structure? Once encountered, it immediately terminates the loop. All right, so that was last month's assignment. This month's assignment, as you can see here, uh, is going to be in the description, complete it for the next video, and then I'll go over the answers just like I did here. In today's video, I want to be looking at some of the VEX code Pro V5 examples that they give that aren't the competition templates. Uh, to find these, you go into open examples and then you can scroll through and look through each one if you're interested. The two we're going to be looking at today, under sensing, we have detecting objects. And the second one I have is distance sensing right here. Distance sensing, also under sensing. Now, I have not worked with gyro sensors in the lab throughout my time doing VEX Robotics, but I was always interested in knowing the code behind them if I ever needed to use the gyro sensing because I have seen others use it for autonomous periods. So this project will detect three different colored objects and display when each object is found on the V5 brain screen. So it's implementing a vision sensor and it's going to display it on the brain of the robot. Let's take a look at the robot config file. So when using vision, um, you can actually figure this out if you right-click Vision 5 and go to Command Help. It will say here, Vision.TakeSnapshot. Vision.TakeSnapshot will capture the current image from the Vision Sensor. It is required first before any other Vision Sensor commands, and make sure you specify the Vision Sensor and the Vision Signature when using this command. So that's step one. Always see if you don't know what the code does, right-click it, click on Command Help, and it will bring up this screen. Now number two is you want to go into robot config files and see what are the requirements and how are they met in this example. So here are a couple of lines of code for the signature for Vision. Um, and why did they name it Vision 5? Well, you can see down here, Vision, Vision 5 equals Vision, and it goes to port 5 for this robot example. You can change it to whatever you want. This is how they keep it organized. They name their signature, and then they specified what the signature means. So I did not double check, but I'm assuming these are RGB codes. You go back to main, and we'll look at how they call each function. So void is used in VEX code. We want to call back the blue object first. Is it blue or is it not blue? And you do this the same for red and also for green. And then in your main function, you call the check blue, check red, check green 
functions and if it's true, it will broadcast it to the brain. Now let's look at the second example that I have here, uh, distance sensing. This program will demonstrate how to use the distance sensor to get size, distance, and velocity information of an object detected in the range of the sensor. I can't really think of an example during competitions where this would actually be useful, but I do know that battle bots use similar tactics. Basically, in an autonomous period, if you are fighting, the robot needs to know where it's being hit from, how big is its opponent, such and such. And this will probably give it a good idea as to what it's going up against, and then the rest of the autonomous period can be coded in, a, in that fashion. So here it's uh, using a drivetrain and a distance variable. So we can right-click where distance is used. So let's say I didn't know what distance dot object size was I go to command help and it says it is used to determine if a detected object is of a certain size and the size types are large medium small and there's also object detected you can go to command help it returns true if an object or surface is detected in its range and false if not so that is a boolean code let's now go into the robot config file distance they named the distance to why because it goes into port 2 that's their way of organization and they also use vision code here for sensing now i do want to say uh some of you may be confused why these two dots the two dots means that under the section of vision it's going to be looking for predefined function code or signature if you think of it like a file directory on a computer, if you open up a file directory and make a new folder inside of that, that folder can only be seen when the first name of the file directory is called. So let's say you saved something to your desktop, you named it your name, my name is Evan, and I want to look inside of the Evan folder for Xcode B5 Pro. But I can't find it if I just click on desktop because it's found inside the desktop inside the Evan folder, and then you can find it there. So let's look at the main code here, while true, which means this is going to be a infinite while loop. First, it's going to calibrate, then it's going to detect the object's size, then it's going to detect the object's distance, and then it's going to detect the object's velocity. One thing I noticed, and sometimes VexCode Pro V5 will not explain everything to you, you may be wondering, what is this percent point two F? If you right click it, it's not gonna give you anything. It's unable to find help. So that's where Google comes in. Here I asked, what does that symbol mean? And on this forum post, if you scroll down, someone here explains it quite beautifully. The percent tells the uh, module that is a symbol for a variable. And the number after the decimal point is going to tell it how much to round. If the number to print was 54.6293, and you have the symbol percent point two f it will then round it to this two decimal places and print or hold the information of 54.63 definitely recommend checking out other examples uh, in order to see them you do have to save them so label it in in a way that you'll be able to look back on it when you want to um, motion drivetrain i already explained that in another video but if you want a specific example, they give a lot of examples here. And if you're going to be working on a side project and you want to implement it into your comp competition template, don't forget to download another competition template so you don't forget anything because it's going to suck when you write an autonomous and it's not defined to be for the autonomous period. That's all I have for this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in next month's video. Peace.